with me. Communication is a term that describes the ways we talk, discuss, and interact with each other. However, as I have started to observe people around me on how humans, including myself, communicate, I have started to realize that the word communication is often misunderstood or even exploited. Although the verbal communication, the ways we talk, which is the typical way we tend to communicate, does place the great value on our life, it does not define the truth of communication. Um, no matter how we speak and what I speak and the ways we speak, it cannot define the truth of communication because the ways we communicate are just small branch of communication and it is not the big picture. At the heart of communication, I believe there should be the understanding of one's intention for that will what lead you to the success of communication. One of the plays I have worked with is called Woman Holography, play written by Deborah Brewer. The play is about a married couple who've lost their child from Lockerbie bombing. Lockerbie bombing was a serious terrorist attack that was real, um, that the, Amer the American plane Pan Am 103 was bombed and crashed into the city of Lockerbie, Scotland. The play ends with a very significant scene where the local resident woman of Lockerbie and the mother who lost their child watched their remains of victims together and overcome the trauma. Well, the theater production is not really a usual way that you're going to encounter to communicate. However, the play really did spoke clearly to lots and lots of audience. The message was that if you have a trauma to overcome, you need to confront the trauma for itself. And if you have someone who shares the same trauma or someone who's going to walk you to that pathway, it's a lot easier for you to walk through that process of overcoming the trauma. And it is also for the audience and public's to intention and responsibilities to, aware, to be aware of such issue and make voice out to the society. Just like this art piece, there are a lot of different artistic interpretations that's just thrown out there, and it's for the public's and viewers' interpretation to respond to that communication. One of the paintings I want you to look at is this. Without any information about this painting, what do you see? Do you see just lines or shapes that are formed there? Or do you see like people, animals, some kind of creations mingling around? Well, this painting is called Guernica by Pablo Picasso, and it was painted as a response to the Guernica bombing in 1937. And Pablo, when, when the Pablo Picasso was asked on this painting, he left all the interpretations up to the viewers. This indicates that once the art piece is published, it is all up to the audience and public and someone who's watching it to interpret respond to this communication that the artist is throwing out to you and actually take it into your life. But such, uh, such way of communication where you're not actually given the intention of one, like in a direct way, may not seem usual to you. But I swear you have encountered this such type of communication for your entire life. Animal communication. When you see a dog wagging its tail, what do you see? What, em what emotion is this conveying? He's happy, right? And when you see a dog, he's hiding his tail and like shivering, what do you see? Well, clearly, he's fearing something, right? Um, as humans, we also communicate with gestures or signals, I should say, to convey our emotion. When someone sends you the smile emoji, or when someone actually crosses their arms, what are they conveying their emotions? Well, you'd say that the one with smile emoji, they're in the good mood, and the one with um, their arms crossed, they're in bad or annoyed, frustrated, or even mad emotions. Well, let's take another scenario into it. Well, what, let's say that the one who's crossing their arms just got fired from work. What can you think of? Maybe you can think of that he is mad at his boss for firing him. Simple, right? Um, just like this, you got the point right away once you see this. Um, a lot of humans 
and myself too often do this and take the interpretations as they're expressed right away and go for our first instant instinct. That although it is a valid choice and valid choice of communicating, that can often lead to the miscommunication. Another way that all that alters and contributes to our ways of thinking and communicating is the life that we have been living in. In other words, the language we speak, the culture we've been in, the environment we've been in, or even a mood of that day affects us on how we think and how we communicate. Culture is a tradition we live, tradition we live, and attitude, our behavior that is going through generations. And culture really, really affects our ways of talking and the language we speak. It affects our tone, voice, pitch, mood, and everything. I too experience that every single day in my daily life. I am a fluent Korean speaker, and I was grown up in a typical Korean culture. And as I have been <coughs> speaking Korean to one and English to another, I have realized that my tone of speaking and the ways I approach of speaking differs. When I speak Korean, I tend to speak in more lower and monotone way because Koreans, I believe, they do not like to inter they do not li like to express their emotions more or talk a lot. In contrast, when Americans, um, I believe, this is something I observed, like to express their emotions or opinions a lot in more open way. So as a result, when I speak Korean, I speak more monotone, and when I speak English, I tend to speak in higher pitch with little more exaggerated gestures or tone or voice. Well, yes, this is why we come, this can also lead to another form of miscommunication because our cultures are different. So what do we do? As it is very easy for us to create the illusions of communication it is very important for us to think about what the communication really means. I think we should start up the conversation with the intention of understanding the communication. First of all, we should start up the active conversation considering the an intention of one that you're speaking to. You should start up the conversation with your mind and your purpose on understanding one's intention and not just to speak what you want to speak or express your own opinion. You need to first hear what the other person is saying to correctly respond and correctly communicate and understand their intention because that is what matters right now. As we're living in the society, globalized society, where a lot of cultures come in and blend in, it is very easy for us to miscommunicate and misinterpret. So we, I think we, it is time for us to rethink about communication and the core meaning of communication because I also believe that as much as this communication is emphasized on our society, we also seem to less value the actual meaning and actual value of communication. I hope you understand that the ways of communication is not just all. There is more greater, there is better meaning to it. Communication is about understanding. It is understanding of interpretation, understanding of perspective, worldview, and opinions about each other. And if you start to realize it and remind that into your mind as you start to communicate, I believe that our society can be more accepted and open society where more people's voices can be valued and heard. Thank you.